Well, welcome to the brand new official Texas Country Music Chart Tiny Office Podcast. Um, got Gabe Chode in studio here. Gabe, how the heck you doing, man? Doing well, man. Doing great. Drove up this morning, had a gig last night. Doing well. But your single, um, I Can't Dance, is doing pretty darn good on, on our chart. Number 21, and you're number 121 on the mega chart. And the mega chart is 258 stations across the states. Awesome. So I mean that's that's a pretty good performance to be on number 121 in the state. It's pretty good. I couldn't be more happy about it. So yeah, well, um, we were talking a little bit before the podcast started. This is this is kind of your first go at original music. You you said you cut your teeth doing covers. Huh? Yes, yes. I started out playing in a rock band in Austin back in the 90s, and mm-hmm. then got married and raised my kids, and then I was playing in country bands around Graham and Possum Kingdom area for quite a while, and then. Uh, Took about seven years off from music while my kids were growing up, and then I, I went back and was playing cover songs, and that's all I was doing. I wasn't really worried about anything. And about two years ago, I started writing, and uh, I've kind of written off and on through the years, but I really started focusing on it and getting, getting, uh, just getting down to work on it, and then I kind of. Went started going to the songwriter circle at the Greenwood Saloon on Sundays, and some other songwriters were like, "Man, you need to, you need to record those songs." And so, I uh, started out at Jackson Malone Studio, and then I went down to uh, um, Loose Cannon Studios in uh, Cleburne, recorded a few songs there, and then made a video for Shaman and put it out. And then Dean Miller in Nashville saw that and reached out and said, "Man, let's get you in Nashville," and they kind of. Just took off from that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you and I have talked about Dean a little bit, uh, yeah. kind of, kind of being a um, little bit of an outsider, I guess the best way to put it in Nashville. But man, he does some amazing work. So, he really does. I don't. I. I mean, it's. A, he, I know he's a. He's a big artist advocate. As yes, basically yes. what it comes down to, he's a big exactly. artist advocate. Um, and I think we need more people like that in in both mainstream and in independent country or Texas country, as we call it here. You know what I mean? So I think more advocates the better but um yeah so so graham texas i've got some some friends out the way of graham yeah uh, but not a big town they got a big uh i, I know the knights called us out there do a big sausage uh they do here. man that yeah the sausage fest it's always a big deal every year you know yeah uh, i know they got a pretty nice golf course out there and that's there he is i'm not a golfer <laughs> but there he is the but <laughs> but uh we we came we crossed paths because of I can't dance. Um, you you do you have another single that's maybe on the horizon or I do. Uh, I've got one coming out April twelfth and it'll be called Heaven Set, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, then in July, going to release one called Look at the Mess We're In, and then uh, sometime I haven't set a release date towards the end of the year for one called Wish I Would Have Known, and then. Going back to Nashville sometime over the summer, and I'll have five or six more songs to release after that. So. Why not, right? Yeah. You know, everybody's got a different way that they write. You know what I mean? I'm a lyrics kind of person, so I can write the lyrics to a song, um, but not a song. You know yeah. what I mean? I can write the lyrics all day long, and I, I, I enjoy writing stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I, from what I can tell, I think you pull a lot off of your personal experiences, at least with I Can't Dance. I've seen you dance. <laughs> right, right. I think you can dance. I think it. I think it. That, that's my, I've been married three times, and my last wife, she was a dancer, and she really loved to go dance. And it's like, and she would make fun of me, like, you are terrible. You're just terrible. And I said, I know. And so anyway, I kind of wrote that song. And we were already split up at the time, but I wrote it as a joke. And then uh I've got some songs, you know, that I've written about love, about heartache, about uh, all that stuff. And I, and I do write uh, from fictional standpoints every once in a while. Try to get more uh, general, universal themes, you know. Sure. But most of it is, even those that I write, it's got some of me in there. You know, I mean, I just can't help it. It's just tell my story, you know. Yeah. So when you when you write, is it 
Do you come up with a melody first? Do you uh, do you, do you think of, is you get like a line or a hook stuck in your head or? It's different every time. Every song okay. is different. Uh, sometimes I'll be driving down the road and I'll have one hit me and I'll turn the radio down and I'll get my cell phone and I'll just talk into it, throw it down. And then when I get home, we all, I'll start messing with it. Um, I've got one that I wrote in like 15 minutes because uh, I just I picked up my phone and just basically just recited the whole song and then got home, picked up my guitar and, and it just kind of came together. And then other times, you know, I'll be at, like at work running my machine. I'm a machinist by trade for now. Hopefully I can get out of this. <laughs> but um, uh, I'll have an idea and I'll just mail that, that cell phone. It's just like those voice memos that sometimes I'll have the melody and the whole book and then just kind of start working around it. Other times I'll just have just the general idea and I'll just start talking into it. And then once I start putting the guitar to it, usually I have to move stuff around a little bit here and there to make it worth. But but uh, what's weird, though, is I, I I started out as a guitar player, wasn't a singer for many years. And uh, but if I I have a hard time writing if I come up with a guitar part first, like I've got three or four guitar parts right now that I just can't fit into a song. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, it seems like the ones come first. And I think that's where, um, and there's not a lot of them, it at least doesn't seem like there's a lot of them around here in, in Texas. That's where, like, Nashville is really strong. They have these, like, little songwriter sessions, they, they, songwriter rounds or whatever you call them. Exactly. Um, where a bunch of, you know, somebody might come up with a little guitar piece. Somebody's like, oh, yeah, I got some lyrics that would go great with that. And you know, Exactly. I would like to get more involved. In, but like I say, there's not a lot of that in Texas. That, um, I know, like, I was talking to um, and, uh, you know, he used to do one uh, way back in the day, and I know stoning was part of that, but and it's just not. I, I think they become a bit to plan and manage and invite people to. I'm not really sure. Maybe so. I don't know. I, maybe it's something we should start. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, heck, Graham is pretty central to Texas in a lot of ways. A lot of it really is. Uh, it's, it's, it's right there in the middle of a whole lot of country music. So, um, which, speaking of that, one of the first people that I saw comment on when you released the lyric video of I Can't Dance was Randy Rogers Band. How, I mean, do you have any affiliation with them? You ever met them guys or anything like that? Not at all. Not it at all. kind of came out of the blue. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that, that kind of speaks to the, the, I think that speaks to the song and that speaks to, you know, uh, uh, how good it is, I guess, the best week. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. I really do. I, one of these days, I hope to meet him. I, I have seen him live before, but I didn't talk to him. So, yeah. you know, uh, it, so that's really cool. I, I met him down at um, Larry Joe Taylor Fest this last year. And I said, man, I've been been listening to you for, you know, since this song. And he goes, you know what that means, don't you? And I said, no, what does that mean? He goes, that means I'm old, but I've been in this too long. <laughs> I said, I don't think you're old, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I do enjoy your music. <laughs> right, right. So... How did you make the transition from rock band to country band? I, a lot of people do that. I know Chris Stapleton did that. Um, you know, what's how does that work? How do you transition that? Well, it was, uh, so I was playing in a rock band in Austin, Texas, and the band, it was, um, it was, I, it was a fun time in life. I'll tell you, there was, there was about 11 of us living in one house, you know, with our girlfriends and all this stuff and kind of had the garage as a studio and course had hair down in my butt and all that you know and it was it was a ton of fun but the band broke up and i uh, moved back to graham and i met my first wife and uh we uh got married started having kids and all that and i i got a call from a buddy he said man we're putting together this band but it's country and that's what i'll play you know guitar and so uh, i didn't know any country i'd been raised you know in texas and i'd heard it my whole life i just never really tried to do it you know and uh, he told me, he said, man, get uh, Merle Haggard's, uh, Hank Williams Sr., and George Strait, Greatest Hits, and just start learning those songs. And if you learn half of those on there, you could play anywhere in Texas. Absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. I mean, he's he's absolutely right. That's, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I think a lot of bands have based their, uh, I, and I'll, I call them kind of the, the bar circuit bands, a lot of them are based it solely off of them. You know, a lot of things that Merle did, a lot of the structures of Merle's songs. Exactly. Uh, and, and they kind of blend the the lines between, you know, some original stuff, but most of them were just playing covers anymore. Yeah. Uh, so that's what people, when you don't have a, 
a brand or something to stand on. You gotta gotta you gotta do something. Gotta do something. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. I mean, there's there's a need for that type of artist. And uh, but I I I really do like the um, kind of that level of of artist that you're you're just getting into. And then uh, you know, I'd say up to. Uh, Oh, he was kind of right there at that cusp. I'd say like a Palmer Anthony's right at that cusp. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that range of artists. You know what I mean? Those are the those are the people that I really enjoy talking to in cars cool. because, um, you know, they're still they're not jaded yet by the business. <laughs> That's still <laughs> <laughs> heard. I still got some joy in them. <laughs> That's what <laughs> <funny. laughs> that, they're so, they're so stolen. Yeah. <laughs> well. I mean, it's it's kind of true. This business can beat you down, and there and it shouldn't. You know what I mean? It's just there's there's so much that, um, and maybe you maybe you've experienced some of this. And I talk I talk about this um, off microphone and off camera a lot, but it's a lot for an artist to handle. You guys are expected to be a business person first of all, yeah. and a lot of people aren't business people. Um, you know, you you got to be a uh, a, a writer, a performer, you got to be a public speaker, you got to be a, a social media manager, you got to be a booking agent, you got to be a, you know, all this stuff to everybody. And it, it's exhausting. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, how do you kind of balance that? You think, how, how do you feel like you're balancing it? I, I run on caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. Um, uh, my mom was a, uh, local politician in Graham. She was the county clerk for 28 to 30 years, 28 years. Anyway, she had to run for office and she was, you know, had to be seen here and do this and, and, you know, all of that stuff. And I saw that as a kid, a uh, young adult, I guess, I guess she started when I was in high school, but um, I saw that. And it, when I first started doing this original music stuff, I was like, you know, this is a lot like being a politician. There's a lot more kissing babies and, and shaking hands than there is playing guitar. And that's, that's and that's, I mean, that is a big part of it. And it's, it's such a small world too. So it's like, yeah, you can, you can inadvertently say one thing that just irks somebody. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's like three venues that won't talk to you or do anything with you anymore. And it's hard to manage that because you don't even know what you did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's not, I don't think you've experienced that, but I've, I've definitely heard uh, stories about stuff like that. And then it's just, and certain, trying to get into certain venues, it's like you got to know somebody that married somebody that, you know, dated somebody else just to, <laughs> just to get books to back places. So, I mean, and, and it's tough. And certain, I think certain places are tougher than others. I know Fort Worth down in the stockyards, it can be real tough to get booked into certain places because they, they just want to deal with the people that they know. Exactly. You know what I mean? And you yeah, just got to get in there. And you just got to get in somehow. But, uh, I mean, it's just got to be kind of crazy. But I, I don't know. Changing gears a little bit, I wanted to ask you. So, it's the, when you made that transition from, from rock to country, who were some of the hey, – I know you mentioned a few names that you – we're told the style of, but who are some of the artists that you kind of really uh, liked and you, you still like to this day that you have kind of followed and, and enjoy listening to? Ah, uh, well, I guess um, one of the, probably not right whenever I changed over to country, but I really am a huge Sturgill Sampson fan. I love his stuff. I love his writing style. I love his voice. I love all that. I could listen to him constantly. Um, a lot of the uh, Southern Rock, New Southern Rock, Steel Woods, Blackberry Smoke, I really love it. Chris coming from the rock background is, sure. you know, they kind of tread the, they walk the line between the two. And uh, I really enjoy them. And now when I first switched over to country, I guess, um, of course, I'd listened to Waylon Jennings my whole life. And I, I kind of, parts of my vocal style, I've kind of patterned after Waylon Jennings a little bit. Uh, I did get into uh, Pat Green and Robert Earl Keane and and um, Cooter Graw and you know all those guys back in the early two thousands and when they were in their well I guess they're still going strong but you know when they, when they were really popping you know back around two thousand two two thousand seven around in there it's, they were sure yeah that's I really listened to a lot of that and still do still do I really like that stuff so well, that's cool yeah I mean I. I, I I definitely 
can relate to a lot of that. I, um, I, I have a different take on country music, or Texas country music, anyways, or what I consider traditional country music, and, and that's because I didn't grow up listening to a lot of the the Waylon and Willie and Merle. I right. just wasn't my. I was more in the, um, uh, I guess the the Bakersfield beat. Oh, okay. the type of country music, yeah. that white yoke music, white guys, and, um, and that was kind of the classic country music for me growing up. And then it was right into George Strait and Hal Jackson and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I didn't really get exposed. I don't think into for at least to Texas country music until uh, I guess it was probably a little bit of Josh Abbott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a little bit of like the Eli Young band and. And it's like, you know, finding people that they'd work with on on like duets and things. That's how I discovered Casey Musgraves before she even released that that song "Follow Your Arrow." That oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Mainstream yeah. country, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so that was kind of how I discovered Texas country music. And then I got down here, and it was just like, you know, listen to ninety five nine the ranch, and then discovered a whole bunch more. And um, you know, and then I started working over at Arlington, uh, over at Arlington at, at the at Texas Live, and you know, got to hang out and you know meet like casey donahue and, oh cool and lewis bryce and all those guys and stuff like that so yeah my i would say my take on getting into texas music was a little bit different um but i i don't know i have such a love for it oh yeah uh, it's yeah. obviously i've built my life around texas music so <laughs> obviously <laughs> you gotta have something about it but um i yeah i i don't know it's 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 definitely a unique animal, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely is. And it's it's funny, you know. I I, I uh, do have some Nashville connections, you know. Now. Sure. And um, it's funny talking to them, and they're kind of envious of the Texas scene. The ones that are, you know, the ones that are only out, you know, sure. they they're envious of, of the Texas scene. It's like, man, you can ride anything you want there. You can, you and. And uh, the door's more wide open. We're in Nashville. It's like, here's your formula. Here's what you do. Yeah. And, you know. Well, and, and to some extent, I think they're, they, I, you know, I felt that the box. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have a yeah. certain box that they, that that only their kind of music fits in that box. Exactly. You know what I mean? And 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 some of the other um, charts out there, if you listen to all the songs on the chart, uh, they have a very defined box of, yeah, they, of, yeah. of what they like to, uh, to allow to chart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I'm all about breaking boxes. Yeah. And, and it just being, uh, you know, I, I, one thing I've discovered, and you can agree or disagree, I don't know, I've discovered that anybody that tries to actually define what Texas country music is doesn't really know what Texas country music is. Exactly. exactly. Um, because it is so many things to so many people. You go out to the Piney Woods. Yes, yeah, totally different. It's totally different. They think Whiskey Myers country, country music. It did. Right here, we would call that. Southern rock. Exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, but you go down to San Antonio and, uh, you know, different again. You get down on the border, down where Charlie Crock is from. Yeah. Texas country is different again. You get out to Lubbock and then you got styles that are like Josh Abbott and Mike Ryan and that kind of stuff. You get out in El Paso and it's even different. Yeah. So, I mean, it is so different for so many people. It really it's is. It's hard to define exactly what it is. We can, we can say our definition is this and yeah. go with that, which I think a lot of people do. But, um, and then, you know, defining the differences between Texas country and red dirt country, because they're two separate things too, but even though we lump them together. They are. They are. <laughs> and it's funny you say that uh, um, whenever I first started and when I got back and had my songs recorded and I was talking to radio promoters and the different people in the industry to try to start pushing this forward, and I had some tell me, oh, close. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's odd. Anyway, I had some tell me, you know, you're too, uh, you're too uh, polished for red dirt. You, you've got too much of the Nashville sound. And then the Nashville people were telling me, well, you're too Texas for Nashville. Right. And so it's like, well, where do I fit in? And, then, and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about fitting in, and and also when people come see me live, you know, I, I do, yeah, you know, I do a two, two, two to a three hour show, and uh, a lot of that is covers, and people will ask for me to play some Red Dirt, and I'm like, well, I don't really do that. I mean, I might do one or two, but 
I just kind of play songs that I love and then I filter it through me and this is what you get, sure. you know? And so uh, once people give me a chance and listen to it, though, they usually usually perk up and I'll play something they all like. But I this the the labels and the genres and all that, I don't I, I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I mean, people ask for this or they say that. And it's like, yeah, it's just music, man. I was, <laughs> it's just music. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for, uh, you know, when I, a lot of the stuff I do, I have to know what the what the labels are and stuff like I that. I get it. I do get it. I just, it, it gets kind of crazy. I, 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 I'm one from the camp that I fully believe you could just, any Americana from Texas, you could just lump it into Texas country. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I mean, most of it has steel guitar fiddle, which is what what the requirement for Texas country. Right? Exactly, right, <laughs> right, exactly. That's there's it. a lot of Texas country out right now doesn't have any fiddle on it. So. Exactly, exactly. Uh, well, you've got a uh, a little video uh, competition going on thing right now. I do. I do. Tell me about that. Well, uh, kind of had the idea, you know, um, I'm making a video showing that I can't dance. I was like, what can I do with this? So I was like, well, let's just have people uh, kind of take my song and show that they can't dance. And then the worst dancer is going to win a parts caster that I'm building. Uh, I started building parts casters years ago. Um, so anyway, we're going to, I've had a couple of submissions. I'm getting a lot of people viewing the video, a lot of people sharing it. But I hadn't got a lot of submissions yet, so I'm. So how can they send you the video? They just need to duet you on TikTok, or out of the out. They of the can screen. do it that way, or they can make it and put it on Facebook or Instagram Reels and tag me in it, either or. And uh, what if they don't want it to be public? Can they send you like a Dropbox or something just so you can? You know, they could do that. They can do that because that might be what's holding people up. Maybe people don't want to show that they can't. <laughs> I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it. I was at my show last night. And I had some dear friends that have been friends forever, Jennifer and Oscar. They're like, well, we would we would make a video and we would probably win, but um, <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> we don't want to do that. We don't want to the internet. <laughs> well, that that kind of makes sense. I mean, uh, and, uh, trust me, I can't dance either. Uh, and uh, oh well, it depends on how many beers I have. If I got about six beers in me, trust me, I can dance. I don't know how good it is, but. <laughs> I well, that's funny. Dance. Back when I I've been sober for tomorrow will be five hundred days, but back when I drank, I was a hell of a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I, I have a, a story, and I, I I don't drink anymore either. But when I was stationed in Korea, uh, when I was in the military, um, the uh, uh, oh the song that was um, Copperhead Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a line dance that went to that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I learned it when I was drunk. <laughs> Couldn't remember it when I was sober, but you get me drunk and I could remember. Should have remembered it, right? Um, it was some really strange recall, and I could. It was a dance I could only do if I was, uh, well, fairly lit. fairly lit. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if that's because I actually knew how to do it, or I just had enough confidence to to go out and do it, even if I didn't know it. Right. Um, one one way or the other, but. <laughs> Just enough of the give a shit is gone. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the that's the key. Just enough of that is gone. Oh uh, man. Um, well, I where where can people find you on social media? Because they need to go give you a follow and a, and a like and all that stuff. I know it's what Gabe Choke Music on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, yes, and on TikTok. It's, I believe it's Gabe Choke Music. Yeah, yeah. And um, got a YouTube channel, Gabe Choke Music. Um, then on Spotify, Gabe Cho, and um, I believe I'm on yeah Amazon and iTunes and Apple Music and yeah all of those. And I so think I look. I don't think you're on. Um, I don't think you're on Deezer or SoundCloud. For those okay. I, I did uh, get on iHeartRadio with uh, I Can't Dance, so that's, that's only good. one on there. That one got picked up a couple of weeks ago. So uh, that's good. hopefully you know that that ball will start rolling. Well, I, mean, I you know I think I can't dance, and you're going to play it for us here in a bit. But um, I think I can't dance kind of uh, rides that border of of Texas country and a little bit of mainstream country because it's got the right rhythm and the right uh, BPM is the best way I'll put it. Exactly. <laughs> the, yeah. Tempo. Yeah, uh, it's got the right tempo for it. So. Uh, I don't, anything you want to add about about your music, your journey, your career, anything like anything I forgot? Well, man, I just want to uh, 
I just want to thank God. I think he's, he's had his hand on, on me through this whole deal and kind of touching the whole deal and opening doors, you know, and, and I think, of course, I want to thank Dean Miller and, and you and Dusty and, and all the folks that have been helping me along. It's been awesome. And I'm just looking forward to, to just riding this out and to see what happens. So Yeah, I think this could be a lot of fun, man. Well, thanks for thanks for kind of joining us on yes, this. Sir. And so this is actually the inaugural uh OTOC Tiny Office podcast. Okay. This is the first one. So you're kicking it off. So hopefully the the podcast dances a little bit, even if you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Well, again, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, stick around. Uh, make sure to check out the upcoming videos. I know uh, Gabe's going to do a I Can't Dance. I don't know what the second song is. He's not told me yet. We're, we'll get there. I'm excited. Gonna, yeah. There's going to be two. There's going to be two really good uh, acoustic songs that he's going to do for us. And um, we're going to do some cool videos for me. But other than that, make sure you subscribe to Gabe. Make sure you give official Texas music chart to follow on all the social medias and make sure you're checking it out. The uh, the OTMC comes out Wednesday night, Thursday morning, and then the mega chart comes out Thursday night. Uh, so, um, yeah. other than that, man, it's been great to have you. God bless you. God bless you too. Appreciate it, Ryan. Joke, man.
make you smile Get me out on that dance floor, honey Well, that just ain't my style Said we can slow sway in the kitchen If you just give me a chance You better believe me when I say 